It just so happens I decided to get myself another LJ 771 project going here with an X3363 processor and a new Asus P5E3 Pro motherboard. I'm going to show you that right now. So let's go ahead and go into the uh, computer room here. Take a look at that. And we have, oh, well, 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 look who I caught. Uh, excuse me, Darth, but I don't think that you're old enough to be having that. I, I know you'd really like to, but, like, dude, you're only, like, three foot tall, and you're made of plastic. I, I don't think you should be having that. Okay, so now I've got the beer pried out of Darth Vader's hands. I'm going to take a swig first. Ah, oh, that's some good shit. So here we go. This is the latest LGA 771 project. As you can see, this is an ASUS P5E3 Pro motherboard. This motherboard sports the X48 chipset, DDR3-1600 memory, uh, and I got an X3363 LG771 processor for this. Uh, the uh, 3363 processor is a 2.83 gigahertz, I believe, processor. It is also the uh, highest clock speed uh, Xeon processor in that family line. Uh, after that, they went to the 5400 series. Um, unfortunately, the uh, original P5E motherboard suffered an unfortunate fate. Um, I did a BIOS update to it in preparation to test the X3363 a couple months ago and unfortunately I ended up grabbing the wrong BIOS file. I got them confused and well let's just say as we say is that. So in an attempt to repair it well the traces decided to rip off with the BIOS. This board thankfully has a removable BIOS chip so that won't happen again and I do have a programmer for these particular kinds of BIOS chips. So what I got going on here is I'm going to go ahead and reassemble this system into that uh, thermal tape case down there uh, for the time being and I'm going to basically do a couple things with this. One, um, the biggest question is why does this particular processor work and not the 5400 series. This is something that a lot of people have had problems with and, and as part of my co contribution to this project I may have to have another swig of beer here um, is to figure out if there is a way to figure it out what the differences are between these chips. The one obvious difference is, is that the X3363 53 and 23, I can't remember which one's under 53 there. Um, they all support only single uh, processor configurations, whereas the E5400 series supports dual processor configurations. The X38 and 48 chipsets are based off of an Intel server chipset, um, and I kind of think that it's actually closer to the Skull Trail chipset than anything. I think this came out first. And because this was the only chipset at that time that Intel had that supported uh, dual graphics cards, in this case, it only, these only support Crossfire. They do not support uh, NVIDIA SLI at this time period because, well, Intel and NVIDIA were not really getting along too well, and NVIDIA came out with their own uh, SLI Intel motherboards. That's why that happened. Anyway, um, the problem here is that uh, this is the only chipset and the Q chipset uh, are the only two chipsets um, that do not work with this processor at this time that I'm aware of. The X series 3848 uh, don't work with the 5400 series and neither does the Q series. And I'm not, a, I'm not aware of if the Q series works um, with the 3363 or not. I really don't know that for sure. So part of this is to try to figure out what the differences are, and I really needed a working platform that actually worked with an LGA 771 in order to be able to test that, and thankfully this combination does work. So I'm going to have to do a microcode update on it because I'm still getting the message about uh, 
you need to update your BIOS to unleash the full power of your processor. Uh, other than that, it works just fine. So, um, this is also going to be to retest the um, mountain lion uh, conundrum that I had. Be kind of curious to see if this board in this combination works just fine. I only had, I can only scrounge around 4 gig of DDR3 that I had. Unfortunately, it's only uh, 8,500 uh, memory. So uh, I did have a 2 gig stick and I had a couple uh, 1066 sticks. I had three 1066 sticks but not four. So um, I want to keep this in dual channel mode. So I'm going to go ahead and get it in the system down there. And we'll see what we have when it gets booted up here. We'll just test mountain line and things like that with it here. So the P5E3 Pro motherboard has found itself into its new home here, at least temporarily, possibly permanently. I don't know. We'll see. Um, i got a CD-ROM that I dug out there. A DVD drive, the last remaining SATA drive that I had. NVIDIA 9800 GT back in the system. And of course, it's a 600 watt power supply. Uh, I'm running a 750 gig SATA drive in it. I have a one terabyte out of a Mac. Um, and I tried that disc and it was so freaking slow that I figured that it's probably the reason that I replaced it because it's probably failing. It's probably down to like 1% health. Did a fresh load of uh, IATKOS ML2. And so far I have had zero, zip zero nada problems uh, running mountain lion on this system so I finally got it um, pretty much set back up here the way that I used to have it uh, different background of course uh, I am downloading some benchmarks although I don't have any yet um, I'm still in the process of doing some testing with this and the LGA uh, 771 processor that is the Xeon uh, 5400 series chip and trying to determine why this LJ771 works and that one doesn't. Uh, and so far the best guess is, is that the X38 and the X48 chipsets, uh, because they're based on a server chipset, uh, are possibly looking for a second processor to be installed in the system and because there is none, the system just refuses to even uh, post any kind of postcodes on the diagnostic card that I have. Um, the very first initialization code is actually something about the uh, uh, CPU halt for CMOS checksum verification or something like that. And uh, on this motherboard uh, with the 5400 series as well as the X38 motherboard was, um, the postcode never gets to even that far. So I'm not exactly certain what uh, initializes that particular code. Um, if it's the chipset or the BIOS or if it's actually the processor that initializes that feature. But um, for right now, uh, I've just got uh, CPU Z on here, or excuse me, CPU X actually, as it's referred to on the Macintosh platform. Um, so you can see here it is a Yorkfield 3363. And you can see the speed. I haven't overclocked it yet because I've just gotten the system back up and running. So we'll be doing some benchmarking. This motherboard does support, uh, does run on DDR3 1600. Uh, so it's going to be a pretty good close comparison to the P45 gigabyte board uh, that I showed in a few previous videos ago. And you can see there again, it's recognized as a quad core Intel Xeon. And just like with the, um, the other two processors, the 5400 series, and my 3220, it's recognized as an early 2008 Mac Pro. And then, of course, we can do our system report and see a little bit more of the processor there as it's recognized by the operating system. So, right now, uh, this thing is running absolutely flawlessly, um, and it's actually pretty fast. Uh, you can see how fast the VLC just loaded there. Excuse me, that was Winamp. I am sorry. But that loaded pretty damn fast, too. Let's load a VLC here. And it's already there. So, uh, Final Cut Pro is a little bit slower, but uh, it's not too bad. If I had an SSD, it'd be faster. Plus, if I had more memory, it'd probably be faster, too.
and we're there so I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing overclocked a little bit and then I can get some benchmarks on there uh, and do some comparisons I'm kinda curious to see um, say the rendering time with handbrake uh, what it is in comparison to the uh, Windows 8.1 version uh, with the uh, 4. Point, uh, I'm running at 4.25 gigahertz right now on that uh, E5450 processor so I don't know if I'll be able to get this processor up to speed or not but it'll be kind of an interesting comparison just to see um, if nothing else uh, what the performance is on video rendering between um, say Final Cut Pro and the Sony Vegas Pro that I've been using on the Windows 8 machine so for now that's all I've got for the update uh, stay tuned for a future update fairly soon update anyway when I get the benchmarks and overclocking all that stuff done on this thing um, the biggest problem right now is just trying to figure out why the E5400 series doesn't want to run on these motherboards and uh, because it, and the, you might say well why is that big deal you might as well just go with the X3353 or 63 series well the problem is is that there's a lot of people in other countries that are doing this mod and um, they can't get the 3363 or the 53 processor cheaply like they can the 5400 series so um, plus it's just kind of a curious thing as to why one works and the other doesn't for sure because um, it seems like they both should work or they both should not work on any motherboard and so far the X series and the Q series are the only two chipsets that seem to have an issue and as far as I know at this time none of the Q series work with either processor so I don't know why that is because the Q series is based off the G series and the G series is based off the P series so if if uh, Q equals G and G equals P then shouldn't Q equal P also I don't know but anyway that's what we're working on so I don't know if there'll be a resolution or not but anyway Take care, everyone. Thanks for liking, commenting, subscribing, and sharing all my videos. And there will be a future video very soon, probably uploaded with this one as well, on updating your microcode. So stay tuned.